Is Sugarloaf safe to consume? New independent studies came out to show they might not be so safe to consume. Let's check it out. Sugarloaf, also known as Splendor, has been around for a long time. It has been approved for safety even by the FDA, which by the way doesn't always mean it's safe, okay? There have been many many studies, hundreds of studies over the years, that proved that Sugarloaf, also known as Splendor, is safe to consume. But most of those uh, studies have been funded by the company, which makes it questionable. But lately, some independent studies came out that actually found that there might be some negative side effects. And some of the negative side effects, we're gonna talk about in a second. <clears throat> but first, let's talk about what is Sugarloaf's Splendor. Sugarloaf is a zero calorie artificial sweetener. Sugarloaf is made from sugar in a multi-step chemical process in which three hydrogen groups are replaced with three chlorine atoms. Yes, you heard right, chlorine. So you're consuming chlorine. And that's what the problem starts. When uh, <clears throat> the body cannot break it down, once it enters your, di your digestive tract, the body cannot break it down and it's been said that you urinate it out. But the problem is on the way to get urinated out, it kills 50% if not more of your good gut, gut bacteria. And that's why you might have noticed when you drink a lot of soda and then you eat, have you felt bloated or like extremely full for the next few hours? Well, I had that problem. Like pretty much every time I go to the restaurant because we get those free refills. So usually I drink only water, but when I go to restaurants, I always decide to go with um, Diet Coke because I'm not drinking it a lot, you know, only once in a while. But damn, every time I drink like three, four uh, Diet Cokes and then I have like some sort of even healthy food, I feel extremely full and bloated. And I didn't know why, but now since the study came out, I understand what's going on. So if your gut bacteria get killed, that's gonna have an issue on your gastrointestinal problem, which, which means you, know, you can get bloating, diarrhea, and gassy. And you don't wanna be gas in the restaurant. And, um, it can only raise, it can raise your blood sugar and insulin. Okay, the reason why I'd say it can is because I have a little study here. The study uh, included 17 people and it showed an increase in blood sugar by 14% and an increase in insulin by 20%. But those individuals were severe overweight and did not consume Splenda on a regular basis. The other group were regular people, you know, regular weight, not overweight, and they consumed Splendor on a regular basis, and they had zero effect on the insulin and the blood sugar. So that tells us that if you're not used to it, or especially if you're obese, you can have a negative effect on, from Splendor. Uh, and then avoid cooking with Splendor. It has been said that Splendor is approved and safe for cooking, especially for baking. But this study here shows that there might be a big issue. And um, it says here that heating with sugarose with glycerol, which by the way is a compound that's found in uh, fat molecules. And let's face it, when you, when you bake, you, you always add some fat, you know, to get it moist and get it tasty. Whether you add some egg, egg yolks or you add some uh, butter or something. And here's the problem. When, when it gets in touch with a fat molecule, it produces a harmful substance. Substance, it's called 
chloropropanils and it can cause cancer yep that might be part of you know the issue we have these days that every fourth person in the United States has cancer right next one is it can make you hungrier yes it can make you hungrier because the brain doesn't know whether you consume an artificial sweetener or sugar the same pleasure hormone in your brain gets activated which then can raise your insulin and when insulin as we know is activated it's also known as the fat storing hormone it can cause weight gain and then we have um, yeah these are more you know ex extreme um, side effects which some actually quite a few people reported you can get blurred vision uh, allergic reaction and weight gain and the weight gain is because as we just said it activates the pleasure hormone and the brain cannot differ you know between you, whether you consume sugar or if you consume an artificial sweetener and then when insulin gets activated and insulin is also known like we said this is the fat st uh, storing hormone it can cause fat gain it's, it's kind of like this let's say you consume a lot of soda and then you consume some food and even if it's healthy food everything gets converted into glucose particles so the body can actually you know um, transport it so the body cannot determine whether it's healthy or unhealthy food the body has a reaction of how fast the insulin races uh, when you consume food. So when you have high glycemic index foods, such as sugar, corn syrup, maple syrup, honey, stuff like that, it raises your insulin all the way. And then when that gets activated and you have some other glucose particles floating in your, in your bloodstream, the body cannot determine which one was the healthy food or which one was the bad food, you know. It's, it's just like the same reaction when you, when you consume sugar. It will take those particles, insulin will take those particles and stores it in the fat deposit. So and that's how the, the weight gain can occur if you consume a lot of sh uh, sugar and or sucrose. And then let's have a happy ending as usual. Now I give you uh, the best natural sweetener, the best alternatives. Actually, I wouldn't say alternatives because it's actually better than the other stuff. You know, a Splenda is about 600 times sweeter than regular sugar. But so is Stevia. And Stevia has a glycemic index of zero. Then we have monk fruit. Uh, glycemic index zero then we have uh, xylitol which by the way is also from a plant glycemic index seven which is nothing and then we have coconut sugar which is the closest to real sugar but the only difference is the glycemic index is about 35 some people reported uh, 40 to 50 but anything below 50 is considered you know low to medium so it's still much better than real sugar and it's not far off from the taste so next time you start baking don't use Splenda use any of these or if you make coffee or tea or you want to sweeten your life a little bit use some of these these are just as good I know a lot of people say well Stevie has a little like weird aftertaste well that might be true but it's not the stevia it's you you know why because we have we have those taste buds in your mouth and they can adjust towards what you eat as an example if you eat a, cons a lot, if you consume a lot of sugar the body will adjust to it and it gives you less and less of the pleasure hormone if i consume just a little bit of sugar i'm like whoa it's extreme it's because I'm not used to it. So my taste buds are very, very sensitive when it comes to that. And you can do the same. If you just consume stevia for a while or monk fruit or any of those or mix them up, your taste buds will adjust after like a week or two weeks. 
depending on you. And you will see, I promise, that uncomfortable aftertaste you have from stevia will disappear. Because keep in mind, these days, all the protein powders, all the diet sodas, all the pre-workouts, not all of them, but let's say 90% have sugarlose in the powder. But now, since all the studies came out, a lot of companies, including my company, we don't use, I never use sugarlose or sugar or anything. I always use stevia and monk fruit, either separate or combined. My pre-work has stevia, tastes really good. My new protein powder that's coming out by end of the year also is gonna have stevia and monk fruit. They have zero calories, they're safe to consume, they're natural, they're from a plant, and the stuff, they don't kill your gut bacteria or cause cancer or anything like that. Anything that comes from Mother Nature is good. A lot of companies, I actually saw it, a lot of uh, uh, supplement companies are waking up and switching to stevia and monk fruit now. All the protein powders I have, I always pick companies that don't use sugar loaves, or sugar, or honey, or maple syrup, or anything like that. So, when you buy supplements, keep that in mind. Look for stevia and monk, monk fruit sweetened protein powders. There's quite a few out there these days, and trust me, they will help you a lot with your digestive tract. All right, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, as always, give me a thumbs up, and thank you for watching.